Hello guys, let us now learn about a new topic in the peptic ulcers which is the last complication of peptic ulcer which is bleeding peptic ulcer. So what does bleeding peptic ulcer suggest? There is bleeding from the peptic ulcer which may be from duodenal ulcer or gastric ulcer or stromal ulcer. Stomal ulcer. So, what are the precipitating factors which causes bleedi bleeding peptic ulcers? These include NSAIDs, H. pylori infection. Okay, so let us learn first about bleeding duodenal ulcer. So, what do you, what, what do you learn in bleeding duodenal ulcer? In bleeding duodenal ulcer, it is 10% more common um there is risk of the chronic duodenal ulcer uh, in the chronic duodenal ulcer risk of bleeding increases um then bleeding uh, in the duodenal ulcer if you see it may be um, either due to the bleeding in small vessels um, in the wall of the ulcer in wall of ulcer crater or due to erosion into gastroduodenal artery so these may be the reasons for the bleed in these ulcers and whenever the posterior usually if you see usually posterior duodenal bleeds are common so uh, what are, what are the clinical features that you see whenever there is bleeding whenever there is bleeding in the duodenal uh, duodenal ulcer then there may be hematemesis and melina obviously and because of loss of blood uh, there is features of shock which are pallor tachycardia tachypnea dry tongue and cold extremities so these can occur so there is also past history of duodenal ulcer should be sort of and there is history of pain and tenderness in epigastrium right so these are the things which are seen in bleeding peptic ulcers so now uh, what are the uh, classification of bleeding peptic ulcers so classification so first classification which is forest classification forest classification of bleeding ulcer according to this classification there are majorly three types of bleeders among them uh, type 1 is again divided into two types 1a and 1b in 1a if this is the ulcer there is just spurting or bleeding spurting and bleeding there is spurting and bleeding in 1b it is non spurting
what is this rock al scoring system so this rock al scoring system is um we give scores which is this is the variable we give score uh, score uh, 0 1 2 3 so variable if age and age less than 60 60 70 9 9 more than 80 and if there is any comorbidity if one has congestive heart failure or ischemic heart disease he is given score to and if he has chronic renal failure or chronic kidney disease ckd and liver disease he is given score 3 and if there is shock there is no shock score 0 if pulse more than 100 beats per minute then it is score 1 if systolic bp is less than 100 mm of hg then score 2 then source of bleeding if source of bleeding is mallory v stare then score 0 all others then score 1 and malignancy then that is score 2 stigmata of recent bleeding there is no uh, stigmata then it is score 0 when there is a clot or spurter then there is or vessel not a spurter vessel then it is score 2 so this is rock al scoring system which is used and then you can do a celiac angiogram to identify the bleeder right and then hemoglobin percentage and packed cell volume can be done then blood grouping and cross matching is done and estimate serum electrolytes blood urea nitrogen and serum creatinine so all these should be done because everything is bleeding so it is an emergency situation so how do you treat it what is the treatment of duodenal ulcer bleeding duodenal ulcer uh so treatment of bleeding duodenal ulcer includes number 1 correct the shock this is done by foot and elevation so here you will elevate the foot end and then you give iv fluids plasma expanders and you do catheterization for urine output and you do blood transfusion to replace the lost uh, blood so blood transfusion can be done and then second one you do a stomach wash because all the bleeding goes into the duodenum stomach wash with rial's tube mm one in 2 lakhs uh adrenaline in saline wash is used saline wash is given okay then third given antacid that is ranitidine iv and fourth give pantoprazole iv okay and then you can do endoscopic cauterization of small vessel
with gastroscopic bipolar cautery or through laser or heater probe okay all these will stop bleeding you will just take this and you will cauterize it okay that is one thing which you can do and then the second one is clerotherapy can be done first clerotherapy we use ethanolamine oleate or distilled water or epinephrine injection can be used or absolute alcohol and polydocanol no polydocanol polydocanol can be done, can be given all these can be used for sclerotherapy and finally you can do angiographic embolization of gastric art of gastroduodenal artery gastroduodenal artery can be embolized also right so all these can be done as it has surgical manage uh, conservative management so how do you then a surgical management in surgical management the first thing that is important is indications one deterioration of condition even after uh, you giving conservative management even after conservative treatment if the condition deteriorates then that is an indication for surgical treatment if there is bleeding from gastroduodenal artery right if there is recurrent bleeding and if this occurs in elderly patient and finally if more than 4 units of blood is required in these situations we generally resort to surgical means now what are the surgery what is the surgery that is done for this bleeding peptic ulcer the surgery that is done is first do a laparotomy and then open a part of duodenum longitudinally just stem it so if this is the a uh, part of duodenum just open the part of duodenum longitudinally okay that is one and after opening it you will have to identify the bleeder then if the bleeding is due to gastro duodenal artery just like it it so if this is the Uh, stomach and this is the duodenum and if you see mm, seria cartery right gastric cartery and then gastro duodenal artery so to this gastro duodenal artery just if this is the, this is present inside right so after opening it just ligate it ligate the if bleeding from gastro duodenal artery then then ligate the gastro duodenal artery and then close the opened gastro duodenum okay 
okay by pyloroplasty which is finnis pyloroplasty so this is the surgery which is done so sometimes this is combined with truncal vagotomy okay so this is what is done if the if the patient's condition is good then you do truncal vagotomy so what is the further treatment given to the patient further treatment you can give further you can give uh, uh, h pylori regimen also and then do gastroscopy after 6 to 12 weeks to confirm healing of ulcer okay so this is bleeding pepti uh, duodenal ulcer now let us learn about the next topic which is bleeding gastric ulcer this is similar to bleeding duodenal ulcer similar to duodenal ulcer uh, so bleeding can be either from the ves ulcer blood or from the erosion of the vessels so even here surgery is the main treatment so in the surgery you do laparotomy and you will underrun do underrunning of ulcer bed or you can ligate the splenic vessels with splenectomy splenectomy or do partial gastrectomy with bilroth one anastomosis and do vagotomy with anterectomy so this is what is done for the bleeding uh, peptic ulcer gastric ulcer in our uh, so this ends the lecture on bleeding uh, peptic and gastric ulcers so let us learn about the complications we have learned about many complications of gastric surgery but let me name all of them so that it becomes easier for us complications of gastric surgery so the first complication is hemorrhage and then there is stomal obstruction and then biliary fistula then sometimes injury to common bile duct duodenal blowout then pancreatitis recurrent ulcer or stomal ulcer and then gastro jejuno colic fistula dumping syndrome nutritional deficiencies so which nutrients are deficient iron then vitamin b12 vitamin b calcium and then pulmonary tuberculosis uh, carcinoma in gastric remnant then gallstone formation alkaline gastritis and then afferent and efferent loop syndrome afferent loop obstruction and also efferent loop obstruction 
so all these are the complications of gastric surgery right so now let us learn about a smaller the other smaller topics of the stomach and we will wind up here after learning the smaller topics so there may be pyloric stenosis due to chronic duodenal ulcer so whenever there is pyloric stenosis due to chronic duodenal ulcer so then what do you do it is not congenital pyloric stenosis but here chronic duodenal ulcer this leads to scarring and cicatrization leading to obstruction of pylorus obstruction of pylorus leading to enormous dilatation of stomach so this is what generally happens so what are the clinical features seen the clinical features are similar to a uh, congenital pyloric stenosis i don't want to write all those again so it is similar to congenital pyloric um, stenosis but occurs in adults okay what are the investigations done so the investigations are one barium meal in barium meal if you see there is one dilated stomach where greater curvature is below greater curvature of stomach is below the level of iliac crest that is one and the second there is no duodenal cap and then there is mottled stomach and a uh, barium don't enter duodenum so this uh, these are the major features of barium meal and then you can do gastroscopy uh, to rule out carcinoma and then you can do electrolyte study because there is electrolyte imbalance and then you can do ecg for hypokalemia okay what are the what is the treatment options which is there which is important the major treatment option is correct dehydration by iv fluids that is normal saline and then correct electrolyte imbalances how do you collect electrolyte imbalance uh, here the electrolyte imbalance is hypokalemic hypochloremic um, metabolic alkalosis with paradoxical aciduria so here give calcium potassium and magnesium and do blood transfusion if anemia right and then a stomach wash is done to clean the contents to clean the stomach contents 
so this is done using edwards tube this will improve gastric emptying okay now what are the surgeries that are done the best surgery that is done is truncal we got to me okay i'll draw it that would be better the surgery that is done here is number 1 so there is pyloric stenosis right here okay number 1 so this is something or these are the okay so now what you do is you do a um, Truncal vagotomy. With gastro jejunostomy of my mayo. So this is posterior. vertical short loop retrocolic isoperistaltic gastrojejunostomy so now along with it this is first one which is done second you can do vagotomy plus antrectomy vagotomy antrectomy plus jejunostomy sorry uh, bilroth one so this is what is done generally so what you do here is the second one is you will do a vagotomy and then you will do the antrectomy and then you do bilroth one so this is what is generally done for uh, a pyloric stenosis due to chronic duodenal ulcer so uh, these are the major things which are uh, dealt in uh stomach in our next class we will learn about the carcinoma of stomach and some other miscellaneous uh things which are left in the carcinoma of stomach in the, in the uh, stomach thank you guys for watching my lecture if you feel there is something inadequate in this lecture or if you feel you need something else then you can comment it in the comment section and you can um uh, also um subscribe the videos for more subscribe the my channel for more videos thank you guys for watching my lectures thank you